Hey Charles, how you doing? I'm gonna send you this video so you can um, observe how I speak as I'm reading out loud. Now, when I read something out loud, I have a tendency to uh, mislook at words. In other words, I'll look at a word and think it says another word, and I'll just almost assume it says something else. So I have a tendency to do that when I read out loud. All right, so I'm going to read something, and I want you to listen to my uh, the way I speak, and just let me know how my accent is, because I'm trying to speak pretty neutral. In other words, I'm trying to speak with a non-accent tongue. So this is some interesting reading, which is actually about what I'm doing. So. This mechanical instrument into the communication of a live performance is sad indeed, and, it's, and it is only a partial excuse to blame the audiences for not listening properly because they are so accustomed to blaring television sets in their living rooms. You must be armed with a well-modulated voice, flex flexible enough to encompass a wide variety of roles and strong enough to be heard as a sizable theater, in a sizable theater. To achieve it, I believe that singing lessons will be served you most. Voice production for the stage has similar drawbacks to stage movement in lieu of dance. Though through singing you will learn to understand the vocal instrument and to exercise it without listening to yourself when you speak. When will not be tempted, sorry, you will not be tempted to make, a, to make beautiful sounds for their own sakes, but will allow your voice to be at the service of your character without self-conscious or contravince. Speech. The glorious means of communication given to man alone and given to an actor <clears throat> as the sole tool that sets him apart from all other performing artists. The necessity to master standard American speech which is, which is beautiful, elegant, without artifice or affection, affectation, affectation is acknowledged by our own profession as a whole. It is, the, it is a mark of our laziness, our lack of discipline and commitment, that so, it, so few achieved it to the point of its becoming an integral part of their instrument. Even though, even those for years attend two or three speech classes a week during which they learn and practice all correct sounds, fall back into their own distortions the moment they leave their classroom. As a consequence, they never arrive at the point of believing it is truly they who are speaking well. They only feel like students putting on correct sounds, and when they apply their newly learned technique to a role, they feel unnatural, and portrayal itself becomes alien to spontaneous human speech. Those who do achieve it will be able to put themselves truthfully into any present or historical time or place, into a myriad of characters they will want to become. Hamlet's advice to the players, speak in speech, I pray you as I pronounce it to you, tripling on the tongue, does not make much sense when delivered with New Yorkers' <laughs> distortions. We have heard the comic overtones in service done to the property of Christopher Fry and T.S. Eliot, to the tirades of Shaw by drawls and twangs and slurs. Nor is British speech the answer. It places Chekhov, Ibsen, Stringberg, or Molaire in the heart of England. British speech belongs to our colleagues absorbed abroad. If it is, the, if it is demanded by a specific character, the milieu of the play, it can be learned with the same relative ease with which others dialects with other which other dialects or accents are learned in particular rows. 
I say relative ease, meaning after standard speech has become a reflex. And it's very easy to revert to one's original speech if part requires it. In order to absorb what the actor has learned in class, he must be willing to take his own lessons into the street. To practice his sounds daily life until it becomes second nature to him, he will need the courage to combat a society in which it is in sin not to be a regular fella. A society that considers any word, sound, or movement outside of the familiar to be affectionate or a sign of dishonesty. He must steel himself against the criticism of his friends and relatives who insist he is putting on airs or acting stagely or uppity when he tries to speak well. He must practice his speech until it becomes used to him, until himself becomes accustomed to it, and can reveal his newfound verbal freedom until ta bar not to be seems weird or will to be or not to be seems weird and will no longer be necessary for his sense of reality. So I can keep going on, but I wanted to give you an idea of how I speak out loud when I'm reading and how when I go to a casting call, I want to appear. Uh, I think I'm speaking loudly and clearly enough to be heard um, outside of the occasional uh, bumps when I'm reading. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's a perfect reader when they speak out loud reading, but um, I think if something is practiced enough, you eventually curb that. So take a look at this, and then um, I'm going to that uh, casting call today. And I'm going to be wearing blue, because I'm going for a cop, I believe. And I'm going to try and speak the way I'm speaking now and see where it gets me. Um, which is really not much different when I speak naturally anyway. But uh, yeah, look at this, and then uh, follow up with me, and we'll talk about it. All right, thank you.